So a just transition is an idea that's been around for a couple of decades, initiated by the trade union movement. And it means that you bring the parties in the economy together, so that's workers, it's employers and government, together in social dialogue to design the plans and the policies and the investments that are needed to transition from one kind of sector to another. So it's basically a, a process, but it's also a theory of change. So the idea of just transition for unions is that through the process of social dialogue, through the process of making plans, how we can get companies that will thrive under two degrees or 1.5 degrees, we can, uh, we can go further and faster together. Well, just to take a step back from a union perspective, all jobs should be green jobs. Right? If we're really serious about climate change, we're talking about the biggest and fastest transition ever. We've never done something like this before. And so there are some sectors that would be affected uh, sooner than others, like polluting sectors, sectors, uh, fossil fuel sectors, maybe transport. There are other sectors that might be affected more slowly, but all sectors, everybody who's working will be their jobs will change in some way. But I, I don't just want to talk about losers um, or about winners. I want to talk about the transition and what is needed so that people have security and opportunity while jobs and sectors are changing. And that's four things. It's social protection, so things like unemployment insurance, access to health care, access to education, pensions. It's decent work which includes rights to association and organizing. It's a living minimum wage, and it's reskilling and upskilling, so that people get the education and the training that they need so that they can move from one sector to the other. It's very different depending on which country you're in, but we do have good examples. Um, and we have very good community-led and union-led examples as well. So uh, tomorrow we'll be having a side event about the community, the Australian community of Port Augusta, where we had exactly this process I mentioned, where unions, employers, and the government got together to plan the transition of Port Augusta from a coal town to a solar town. So some places we have great examples. Other places we are very far away, especially in just protecting the basic human rights and labor rights of workers. So just to unpack this a little bit, again, just transition is not a set of demands that you tack on to the process at the end while you're thinking about climate change. It's actually that you are working on both issues at once, right? So you're working on the climate change issue, but you are engaging the people who are doing the work in designing the process, coming up with the plans, and having a sense of power in their own future. And the amount of money that you would need for it is basically the same as whatever the amount of money that you need to transition the economy. Because let's face it, it doesn't really help us to solve climate change in a way that creates massive economic and social disruption. Right? At the end of this, we want to come out not only with a world where emissions are down, but actually people have decent and better lives. Yes, what we are also seeing is the process of decades of the hauling out of the wages of working people and their benefits and conditions. And that is absolutely the result of political decisions, government policies, and bad behavior by many companies. So what's happening right now is not directly related to climate change, but it gives us a sense of the massive change, of course, that we will need if we're going to be able to go faster and further together on climate. For unions, the fact that just transition is in the Paris Agreement is a huge victory, right? We worked very hard to get it in there. We worked hard to get the International Labor Organization's guidelines on just transition, which also came in 2015, and to get the Sustainable Development Goals, particularly Goal 8, which reflects many of the elements of just transition. 
Um, what we think it means in the Paris Agreement is that number one, every country when it's preparing its NDC must consider the just transition of the workforce. So as part of their process, they must bring the parties together in social dialogue and look at what are they going to do to smooth this transition from one sector to another, covering the elements I mentioned. The second thing is that it extends across all of the different aspects of the negotiations. So you can see they would have implications for finance, that for developing countries, maybe particularly those that are dependent on fossil fuels, that there needs to be finance for their just transition so that they can retrain their workforce, start new enterprises, uh, revitalize communities with new infrastructure. Um, it extends as well to adaptation because there are many jobs that will be created or could be formalized, made decent with contracts, appropriate wages and conditions as a result of adaptation to climate change. And of course it affects mitigation. I mean, I think there's, there's one last thing I wanna say about it. So just transition can be the best investment that everyone, all of us makes uh, for our futures because there are no jobs on a dead planet. And if we don't act on climate change immediately, we're going to be worrying about much worse things than what it might cost to retrain some workers. Um, but it, it can be the best investment. But first, people have to come together, workers, employers, and government, in social dialogue, and we must have a plan. We can't just sort of leave this to the invisible hand of the markets. This is something that has to happen very quickly, and it has to be thought through so that we solve climate change and end up with better lives and decent work for the people affected.